Okay, uh, I'm having to make up some test leads uh, for my new pieces of test equipment and I thought, well, why not make a short video of uh, what I was doing. So, what I've got here is the empty contents of a Greenpar N-Type uh, connector which is designed for use with RG58. Um, the 5mm RG58, not the 6mm or the 6.5 or the 7mm Aeroflex, but good old fashioned RG58. And, and as you see, it comes with a variety of bits. And if you look carefully, you can actually do this in a logical order. I'm going to put the bits in as you would when you were uh, putting the connector together. And that is pretty much the order in which you do things. Um, the easiest way to demonstrate it is to actually do it. Um, you take your piece of cable, you put your compression nut on the end, you put your rubber ring on the end, and then this is where a bit of practice, a bit of knowledge comes in, but you soon get used to it. Um, I'm going to cut it excessively long just to show you. Uh, you take your sharp knife and you run it round the cable, trying to get it in a, into a, a reasonable sort of circle. You don't want to cut all the way through, not at this point anyway. Um, there you go, that's there. And I say you take cutters and you can pull off the outer covering. It should be detached. Obviously this is very well stuck, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slice down the edge like so. And then that should split there if I've cut it enough. Yes like that, you take that bit off, then what you do is you take your braid and you feed it back over itself like that and then you take your cable attachment like this, your cable inner and you slide it in and you push it all the way in until it meets up with the braid and the outer that you've cut. Now at this point you bring your, your braid and, and you just literally get your cutters and you start to nip it off so that you can take all of this excess away. I'm just going to slide it under there like that find the bits I haven't done like that. obviously you know you're not gonna cut deep and you're not gonna chop in like this to your inner you're just nipping these whiskers and if you slide the the blade of the cutters underneath you know the only thing you will be cutting is the whiskers So like that, you need to just make sure there's one more somewhere. Come on, up we come, there. Until that piece becomes loose. The rest of that can sit flat against there, that's not an issue. These long whiskers you want to trim down. because you don't want to run the risk of them shorting the centre pin. Then you can cut them in the middle and that comes off. So let's throw that in the bin. To take those bits out the out the way for now. You can, you can't, you know. Then the next thing you do is you put on your centre gland like this. Now it actually goes with this bit inside your metal gland leaving you a flat surface here 
So what you want to do now is, again, with your sharp knife, you only want to cut the outer plastic. You don't want to cut any of the, the cores. And then you, as you pull that off, as you pull that off, you can actually start to twist. Now it looks like I've cut too deep in places, just a touch. So then you throw, throw your centre bit away. Now you're left with quite a long piece here. Now what you actually need to do is you need to measure how deep your pin is. So if your pin goes in that to this line here and sits on the flat, the total length you want going inside the pin is around about there. So you cut the rest of that off. Then what you do, you take your centre and you see if it fits. Now obviously that's actually too long because it's bottoming out. So I'm going to take another little snippet off the end. Just drop that in the bin. Let's put that in there so that it sits in the ring. Are we still bottoming out? Not yet. That's it. Now we are. I think we're still bottoming out. Yes, we are bottoming out. Don't know if I've got. The, don't know if I've got some of the centre plastic sitting up. No. It could sit a little bit lower. That's what's that's what's causing it. This centre plastic. So I'm going to uh, trim it back to that ring. been a long time since I've done one of these to be honest and there we go and then we can twist that together like so and the reason for twisting it is just to make the solder flow a little bit easier then again make sure that uh, your center is the right length that won't bottom out Make sure that you get it all in, like that, and that should sit there. And you should see your coax centre in there. And then this is the fun bit, you get your solder. I can't find my other bit of solder, so I'm starting a new roll. Hopefully it will work. Yes, again, this, this solder is uh, somewhere in the region of 25 years old, so uh, it's definitely going to be lead-based. And then you heat up the pin, and you keep heating it until your solder starts to melt in the hole. And as it melts in the hole, you just push it back onto that centre pin and just add it to the hole. Now I find it's easy to do it while it's still warm but you put the hollowed out section over your solder like that. Now be careful this pin is still hot and the reason for doing that is any warm solder is instantly shaped by this bit of plastic. And then it's just a matter of taking the end of the connector, pushing it down fully into the barrel, bringing down your rubber ring, pulling down your compression fitting, and then twisting the two together. Now you can use either a pair of adjustable pliers, um, 
adjustable spanners or you can use one adjustable spanner let me just get the uh, spacing right there and twist that on or if you want to you can use um, RS do a pair of spanners in their adapter kits which you can use for that or you could just get you know another pair of any old pliers and twist the compression ring down until it no longer moves and there you have a very solid almost waterproof I won't say it's completely waterproof but very waterproof end type connector Thanks very much for watching and I uh, hope you enjoyed this video short. Thanks very much. Bye bye.